YouTube, what's up? So, so grateful that you clicked and you're about to watch a new YouTube video, but before you do, 212-931-5731. That is my texting community platform. I'm doing a lot of one-on-one engagement in there and also access, opportunity, first looks in that environment. 212-931-5731. Join it now and now to the video you've been wanting to watch. The reason that everybody should make a TikTok video is not because you have a product selling to 80 year olds and there's 12 year olds on the platform or that you wanna, really the real reason is to get your kids super upset. But, (laughs) but, yeah, but the real reason is you got your perspective. How much are you? How much are you addicted to accountability? Hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, everything in my life is my fault. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. I'm. I. I re- I really believe that we have to make accountability cool, and that like I'm starting to believe, and I've been throwing it out there. I'm starting to believe that if we make accountability cool in the same way that we view being politically woke in the same way in entrepreneurship that we view the grind, in the same way that we view watches, in the same way that we view activism and giving back. You know, all these things that I just mentioned, a decade ago, not cool. Like it just, it wasn't. Everything I just mentioned, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, not in the consciousness. Accountability leads to, maybe you're miffed at your mom, right? Maybe I've helped you through my content to say, Actually, it's your mom who's your problem. But then when you take that and actually put it on a shelf and say, yes, but it's my accountability to accept it or not. Then when you deploy empathy and say, yeah, but her mom did that to her. All of a sudden, you don't resent your mom, even though you've had the epiphany of like, fuck, that's the problem. And you take it on you, which then allows you to get light it's fun to not resent your mom anymore because who wants to really? And then you start chipping away at accountability and like you just change the framework. It's acknowledging it. You have to know it's in the room but it goes to not blaming that because that becomes the crutch and the excuse. You have full control. I believe if we make accountability super cool, it will lead to enormous amounts of happiness. Hey guys, just did a podcast, start to this day. Um, Jason and I are talking, it, it, we really hit on something which is let's make accountability cool. I'm starting to realize accountability actually leads to so much of my happiness and I think I'm gonna start beating that drum similar to empathy and other things. I think you're gonna see a lot more accountability talk which is gonna be uncomfortable because people hate it but I think there's really something there and I'm gonna try to navigate those waters. What are you, a Visco girl? Sorry? You're like a Visco girl. Do you know that the, the Visco girl, 14 year old teenage girls have fully taken over the, one, the white on white Air Force Ones? <laughs> you don't know about this. No, I don't. You're gonna, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna have to really change up your sneaker game. Wow. We get him out on camera? <laughs> oh, she yeah. does this shit on me on camera. It's true. No, I just, um, that was no, not shitting on you. I mean, That's are, me trying are, to help you. I mean, these are classic. So what? They're I, I super classic. I gotta rock the off colors. It's not Rick Ross anymore. It's Visco Girls. Community, good morning. Uh, as I look at Madison Square Garden and the Empire State Building, I'm gonna leave you with a tidbit. Judge the judger. Always think about who's giving you the advice or the feedback. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt your uh, video. I'm just giving you this call for my number uh, to let you know that you have to join my text community. Uh, 212-931-5731, hit me up with a text. (coughs) The context is I've been (coughs) phlegmy. Uh, About to speak here at SAP. It's live on the internet as we speak. I legitimately have no idea what the fuck we're about to talk about but I'm being fireside chatted. 
which is always my favorite because I just answer the questions. Oh, and best commute ever. SAP happens to be in the same building as us. So we just had to go down the elevator to go back up the elevator. We're on the 25th floor. This is the 48th? 48th. Jason. Good save, good save, good save. Get out of here. The little video you did on making a decision. Yes. I shared that with my daughter. You're very she's, sweet. She's 16. Yes. It wowed her. Like, it made a difference for her because she's so timid about what she wants to do, where she wants to go in life. Yes. And she's not, she doesn't know how to be bold. I get and it. You inspired her. Thank you for so, saying that. Yeah, Thanks for sharing. It was it's, awesome. You, it's, awesome. it's, I'm so good with words, but there will never be words that I can put to being on the receiving end of that right. sentence. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, I mean, it's like... Those were the actual words, right? Yeah. Is that where yeah. you were going? <laughs> I know what you guys were thinking. Yeah, exactly. You articulated, but you said you couldn't articulate. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it was a very meta event. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. So, yeah, it's yeah. really, it's fun. It's yeah. really fun. And you know what's, fu- what's really fun about what you just said is actually my process. By me reading so many direct messages from 16-year-old girls, from yeah. 21-year-old guys, it's how I even knew to go there. Oh, there you go. So See? it's really very yeah. fun to like go through the process of being an anthropologist, strategist, listener right. to becoming a prolific speaker yeah. and how it just kind of works. Yeah. Ali US Org asked a question, can you provide some insight for startups trying to acquire users with no marketing budget? And Gary, this is a big issue. A lot of people are starting up, just starting their businesses. I have family coming with me. My niece and nephew just starting a fitness business. Ramon, we don't have a lot of money. Any tips you can give them if they zero money or little money, how they can start? Yes. Uh, I think about two core things in my macro thesis of underpriced attention. Which ads are actually underpriced for what they return in business results, not reporting results? And which platforms are giving us free organic reach that over time may lead to awareness? Right. Right now, the two greatest platforms in the world for organic reach at scale are TikTok and LinkedIn. Now, TikTok skews extremely young. So if you're selling to 54-year-old CIOs, TikTok's not necessarily going to be the place to go. But if you're starting a fitness app, TikTok's an incredible place to go. It's really ironic. You know, we're sitting in a moment of time, and I have not seen this in the last decade, where one mature platform and one extremely young emerging platform are the current state of organic reach at scale. So that's the answer to that question. But there's other things. There's sales DNA. I think every single person starting a business that has no money needs to take out their cell phone, go into their address book, and literally text every person there, whether it's their mom or somebody they talk to once. Who you know already. Correct, and say, look, and this is the nuance. Do you know anybody? Not, will you buy my product? Do you know anybody who might be interested in my ex? I think you'll get two or three answers. And I I think people are scared to ask. And uh, when you have no money, you only have the ability to ask. Yeah, for sure, I like it. Well, hey. Your thoughts on social media and digital advertising overall, when the, the big guys and gals jump into it, are costs gonna be different? Is it gonna be harder for smaller businesses? What do we need to understand about more and more companies shifting, depending on what you're saying, shifting their ad dollars to digital? How does that affect other businesses and what should we know about it? Well, this is why I keep yelling at the Davids of the mm-hmm. world. When Goliath comes and spends money on a platform that is completely supply and demand of how much money's in it, and as an actual marketplace, not a floor of cost of inventory, that is what people need to think about. Like the reason to be early is no different than the reason to be early in real estate. We're sitting here in Hudson Yards. We were here four years ago as a tenant. That was a better price per square foot than it is now because this is all built out. That's right. So, you know, that's how I think about the end consumer's awareness. Organic reach on Facebook six years ago when I was screaming at the top of my lungs was remarkably low and that really helps small businesses. As larger businesses come in and start spending ad money, the cost of getting into the stream goes up. It's like everything else. Super Bowl used to cost a lot less when a lot less people watched it. This is just supply and demand. It's always supply and demand. And yeah, and this is why the LinkedIn and TikTok conversation is so important because when you don't have the luxury of big media dollars, you have to look for those angles or even when you have some media dollars, you have to look at things like Instagram swipe ups or heavily targeted YouTube pre-roll to understand where there's scale right. to move your business, but an underpriced net cost on the actual attention consumption, not the potential reach, but the actual reach. 
No, for sure. And I did my first TikTok video, by the way, just a few weeks ago. I'm very proud it of you. It came out, but I did it. You know. I had to go. <laughs> it was okay. I just wanted to test it out and try it out. So everybody should do a TikTok video. Uh, Gary, this is a kind of By the way, real quick, Please. just to bring value. The reason that everybody should make a TikTok video is not because you have a product selling to 80 year olds and there's 12 year olds on the platform or that you wanna, really the real reason is to get your kids super upset. But, (laughs) but, yeah, but the real reason is when you create for the platform, you may find a nuance there that you learn that three years later matters for your business and storytelling on a platform that does age up and uses that nuance. I think that I did well on Instagram and Snapchat and now TikTok because I pot committed to Vine seven years ago and picked up on the nuances that I now still use creatively. So the learnings of making video in that way, in that form, become skill sets that you may deploy when maybe LinkedIn evolves its video product and has some of those nuances. So I, I helped piece together some of the uh, question lists that they just made. One of the ones that I totally had an interest in that uh, he wasn't able to get to at the Democratic um, debates. They, one of the largest conversation pieces was breaking up the major, yes. right? Google, yes. Facebook, all those. Given that you advocate the use of them yes. for marketing, yep. branding, the whole yep. thing, what's yep. your view on some of the... I'm kind of unemotional. If they get broken up, I'll have to look at the capabilities of the platforms. You know, what's amazing about being 100% consumer centric, if you told me the internet has to be shut down right now, I'd be happy to do direct mail, newspaper, radio, and television ads. Yeah. So my thoughts are, I don't know, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I really don't care. I'm just prepared to adjust to the reality. Instagram's organic reach drop is a far bigger concern for me than if it got broken up, separated from Facebook. That's political conversation. That's pandering to the macro conversation of the demonization of technology. That's gonna play out however it plays out and whether they get these companies get broken up or not is not really something that even comes to my mind. I'm a day trader of day-to-day underpriced marketing attention. And if those platforms aren't able to achieve the best deal, then I'll find the thing that is. Just because they're Please. broken up doesn't necessarily mean that you're not gonna be able to leverage it for what you wanna use. Yeah, I just need to, see. if they said that Facebook can't have any data to target people, then it becomes television. Please. Question number one, many entrepreneurs uh, think about social media like TV. Yes. And make old communication, not nice, very yes. boring. Yes. What do you think about it? I think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think most people are putting out content in a traditional way yeah. and don't respect the platform they're distributing on. Those videos were made for television. This is a different medium and we have to make content that fits the medium that we're distributing in. And most people don't think about context. They think about production value on content. And that is the enormous mistake of the far majority of people that are producing content, both individuals and the biggest companies in the world. From Carol to Coca-Cola, it is the mistake. The elevation of production value of the content and the disrespect for the context of the platform it's distributing it on. Okay. Many uh, practitioner and uh, Italian entrepreneur are very concerned about uh, the handling of uh, haters. 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 Yes. Yeah. And uh, do you have some advice? Is better to I have an answer. Delete it. Uh, no. Answer. Yes. Uh, or ignore do nothing. Ignore. Answer as often as you can. Ignore ninety. Answer one percent of the time because you're busy. <laughs> ignore ninety nine percent of the time. Zero percent of the time, delete. Never delete? Never delete. Okay. okay. Because deleting it gives it more power. Okay. More importantly, let me leave everybody with this. Zero of your haters will be by the bed when you die. <laughs> okay. Zero of the haters will be at your Christmas dinner. Zero of the haters, you know, we, we lose loved ones. We lose to death loved ones. We mourn them for an hour, a day, a week, and then we move on with our lives. We remember them, 
we hold them dear, but your parents, your children, God forbid, your best friends, you mourn them for a week if you're deeply in love and then you remember them forever. To, to, to live your life based on a stranger who you won't even know anything about is a very bad idea. It has less to do about the hater, it has to do with the person's own insecurity. Roy. The question is, what uh, appeals you to have maybe that don't have agency experience to come and work here? I don't like agency people. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a weird, true answer, Roy. We are about to hit a chapter right now where we really need, especially, actually in all functions, but for strategy and creative, I need less agency people because we're building a model that's upside down. And all I want at Vayner, besides kindness, as a macro, in the micro of the actual work is ideas and making. And you don't have to have worked at an agency to be talented enough for ideas or have the humility to be good at making. So this is a really exciting chapter for us because A, we're very, very much focused as an organization to create a enormous push of diversity and inclusion within the organization that is just, ultimately I decided all the things I was doing for the last three years and empowering executives wasn't getting done, so I just decided to become a dictator of it. That's why this is happening, that's why many other things are happening, that's why Erica was hired, like, like we're doing it. At the same token, it's when we need to hire people that don't need to have agency experience, thus we're not at the mercy of the agency's industry's lack of it. So it's, it's good fucking timing, Roy.